Okay, so this is a question that is uh, the interface between cosmology and astrobiology, I would say. Uh, we don't know if there are intelligent agents in the universe, besides ourselves, uh, of course, and, but we would like to find out. And so um, one may wonder whether intelligent agents are rare or common in the universe, and, and whether a universe where intelligent agents are rare or a universe where intelligent agents are common are very different, fundamentally different. Um, so there are already, well, one, one may define uh, in general uh, habitability in loose terms as the uh, capability of an environment of uh, supporting life and certainly uh, in very general terms we can say that habitability depends on some physical conditions uh, and these physical conditions are not equally distributed in space and time. Uh, they depend both on local environments, for example, on planetary uh, environments, but may also depend on global uh, feature, on cosmological features. Um, on the question of habitability, there are already a number of studies, uh, different possible predictions for the distribution of life, life in general, uh, in space and time. There are papers on uh, galactic habitable zone, for example, the fact that our galaxy uh, has not the same conditions everywhere. Uh, there are uh, differences both in space and time, and so life cannot be possibly um, uh, uniformly distributed in our, in our galaxy. There are also studies on the overall habitability of the universe, whether the universe was always habitable or it became hab habitable at some particular epoch in time. And, uh, and also, if you want to get speculative, there are studies on, on the multiverse, on, on the multiverse, or ensemble of universes with realized different conditions, and so on and so forth. Okay, and of course, we know that this is a complicated issue because there are anthropic biases, and, and, and it's very different. It's very difficult to, to get you know sensible statistical estimates on the distribution of life in the universe because, uh, of course, uh, we are. Uh, looking at, at the universe, uh, assuming that, that, that we are here. Um, and, in, and of course, in the case of intelligent agents, it, it's even more complicated because there are additional problems that you don't encounter with, with you know, simple quote-unquote uh, life. One of these problems is intentionality, and, uh, and, and then as, uh, and there are, of course, the increasing energy demands of, of, of for example, technological civilizations. Uh, there is this famous classification scheme that was uh, devised by Kardashev in the 60s about the uh, different type of civilization uh, classified in terms of, of, the, of the energy consumption. And of course, we don't know if that, if that classification scheme uh, makes sense or not. There, there may be physical bounds, strong physical bounds about uh, what intelligent agents can accomplish. We've seen uh, this morning in, in Fred Adams' talks, uh, for example, computational bounds, but there, there can be other bounds. And, um, and so the, the question is whether we, we can actually detect uh, this kind of, um, of activity in the universe. There has been uh, recently talks about uh, and papers about agency dominated biospheres where you have a biosphere which is not simply dominated by life per se, but by life which is capable of acting on the environment in a way uh, to, to globally modify the environment of a planet. And you can wonder whether you can get some uh, indication uh, of the presence of this kind of um, biospheres in the universe. So these are all open problems. There is an increasing interest on these kind of problems because of the discovery of exoplanets in the, in the past 20 years. And we have, uh, arguably, we are, we are, we are going to have increasing amount of data in the next uh, decades because there'll be, uh, there'll be better observations of, uh, of exoplanets. And people are getting interested in this uh, search for technosignatures, which is uh, uh, similar to biosignatures, but for, uh, uh, for intelligent agents. So uh, from uh, life, which is capable of altering the environment of, of, the, of the planet on a, on a global scale. Um, there are even more speculative questions about, for example, whether life can spread intentionally in the universe. And all of that is, uh, has some um, bearing on the possibility of detecting them. Because, for example, the, the fact that, uh, that the temporal distribution of life and intelligence in the history of the universe may not be uniform, and most likely is not, 
uh, has some implication on the uh, on the probability of detection of this of this uh, uh, intelligent agents. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, one of the few observational facts that we have about life and intelligence and the distribution of life and intelligence in the universe is that we have no evidence. And so it's clear that there is no uh, saturation, at least, of, of, the, of, the, of the signals that, the, that, we can, uh, that, we can, that we have received um, until now. And so one may one wonder what is the explanation of that. And there are many explanations, but one of the explanations is, for example, that we have a very limited time to observe the universe. We've had only, only a few decades of observations, so unless you have you know, a strong synchroniz synchronization of, of the signals over the entire history of the galaxy, you wouldn't observe anything. And so you, you, you want to know uh, whether there is uh, a uniform distribution or not. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay.